Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you for joining me today. This is episode 40 of Hockey on the Spot. Woohoo! Um, for today's episode, the main topic for today's episode, I'm going to talk about something that I've basically been wanting to talk about for a while now, but haven't really had the chance to because of other things. But I want to get this done before the season begins. Basically, I'm going to be previewing all 12 teams of the 2014 Men's Ice Hockey Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia for the upcoming year. However, unlike the 30 teams in 30 days, because we are so, so short on time and because the preseason is going to begin soon, I am not going to talk about each team individually. I'm going to talk about each team by their respective groupings. So today, we are going to talk about Group A. But before we get right into that, there are a few updates that I do want to touch upon real quick. Um, first off, a big congratulations to the, to, the, to the Detroit Red Wings, who won the Traverse City Prospects Tournament, the host team, uh, defeating the Buffalo Sabres in the championship game. So congratulations to the Red Wings. Um, in, on winning in front of the home crowd. Um, um, that's a big step up for their prospects as now they will prove to have possibly the best prospect pool now with this tournament victory. Um, also, some big news today. A, it, Dan Cleary has pretty much chosen his team, folks, and to no surprise, it is the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, originally, it was believed that he actually signed with them to a three-year contract worth $8.25 million, which is ridiculous for his age. But I don't believe he has signed just yet, Instead, but he, for right now, has been signed to a pro tryout contract. He will enter training camp for the Philadelphia Flyers, but it's pretty much a given that he will be on their roster. <laughs> which is good for them because they absolutely need a third-line left winger, a guy who could also be a second-line forward. He'll fit very nicely in Philadelphia on that third line. With, um, So I think it's a good move by them, and I think he will eventually get signed. Also, goal veteran goaltender Tim Thomas, who was technically... He, a New York Islanders unrestricted free agent, seems like he'll be making his decision very soon of where he's going to play. Um, and obviously, wherever it is, though, it'll most likely be on a one-year basis. Um, personally, I think maybe a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning should maybe go after Tim Thomas because they are very thin in goal. They are very big in goal. They have the biggest goaltending tandem with Anders Lindback and Ben Bishop, but they need a goaltender like Tim Thomas. Um, and last but certainly not least, uh, Brad Boys has made a decision where he's going to go. He has turned down the training camp invite of the New York Islanders and will instead in attend the training camp of the Florida Panthers. And this is a good move because the Florida Panthers – need a guy like Brad Boyce. He had a comeback year last year, where um, not so much in the goal scoring category, but in playmaking. He only had 10 goals, but he had 25 assists for 35 points, playing on the top line with John Tavares and Matt Molson. The big question now will be, can he produce the same kind of numbers, if not better numbers, on a line that doesn't really boast a lot of star talent? Um... <laughs> Um, he'll most likely play with a guy like Thomas Fleischman and maybe a guy like Jonathan Huberdeau. I can see that as the potential top line for the Florida Panthers in training camp. If he does well, they will sign him, probably though to a one-year deal. But that will, to me, be the line. Jonathan Huberdeau at center with Brad Boys on the right and Thomas Fleischman on the left. That should be the line. Um, and those are all the updates for today. And now let's get into our main topic. Group A of the 2014 Winter Olympics men's ice hockey. The teams in Group A, there are four teams per group, three groups. <laughs> group A consists of Russia, Slovakia, Slovenia, 
and the United States of America, Team USA, my, our homeboys. Um, so we're going to quickly talk about each of them and what their strengths and weaknesses are and where they sit in the standings. We're going to start with the weakest of the, of the division, Slovenia, the newcomers. This is their first time ever in the Winter Olympics for men's ice hockey. Um, so not, not much, too much is known about them. We don't know <clears throat> anything about any of their players, really. And we don't know what kind of style they're going to bring to the table. But they are not only the big underdogs of Group A, but probably of the entire Olympics as well. Four years ago, it was Team Norway. This year, it is Slovenia, with Norway being a close second, and Latvia not falling too far behind from that either. So, um, Slovenia, don't ex I do not expect them to win any games in the Olympics. There's only one really good player that's going to truly be on that team, and that is Andrzej Ko and that is Los Angeles Kings forward Andrzej Kopitar. Unless Andrzej Kopitar absolutely takes over in that tournament and single-handedly does everything on that team, Team Slovenia is going nowhere. Jan Mersak is also going to be on that team, a Detroit Red Wings prospect who has some promise. And also maybe we could see a guy like Andrzej Kopitar's brother, who I've heard a little bit about, his younger brother. But overall, not going to do it, not going to be a good team in my opinion. They're not going to be that great. They're not deep at all. Again, Andrzej Kopitar is their only significant player. And again, he basically has to be their do-it-all guy, and he has to be the star of the whole tournament in order for this team to pack a punch. I don't see them winning a single game, and I see them finishing as the worst team in the tournament. And in addition, I think Andre Kopitar is pretty much going to do all the scoring for this team, or the majority of it. I don't see them being much of a threat. So for fans of Slovakia... USA and Russia, no need to worry because this team is not going anywhere and they won't be going anywhere for many years to come. Now we'll talk about some of the more important countries. Group A does present three members of the Big Eight or Big Seven, whatever you consider, uh, whether you consider Switzerland a part of that group or not. Personally, I do, so I consider it a Big Eight. Um... So, but three members of the Big Eight are in this group. Slovakia. Slovakia went on a surprise run last year, just coming short of winning the bronze medal. They had a 3-1 lead over Team Finland four years ago, but blew it in the, at the end of the game aim to Finland's power play. Slovakia has never won a medal since separating from the Czech Republic. Um, so you can expect them to build off the t kind of tournament they had four years ago. And they do have the talent. This is a team that's known for its fast skating as well as its hard shooting defensemen. It has a lot of defensemen who can really shoot the puck. Zdeno Chara, Lubomir Vishnovsky, Andre Mazaros. These are three NHL defensemen who all possess hard shots. You can expect all three of them to be in the tournament this year. You could expect to see Marion Gabrick in the tournament. He's going to be there this year, and he could quite potentially be their top player. Marion Hose is going to be there. He's also a guy who could be their top player. Michael Hanzus is going to be there. He's not getting any younger, but he's still a formidable force defensively and a big body. He could be of some help. Um, Marion Hose's brother, Marcel Hosa, a former NHL player, he'll be there. Miroslav Shatan, he's still playing, so he could p quite possibly be there. Not the same as he used to be, but still a formidable force. So, Slovakia does have some good players. Unfortunately, the one player who won't be there is Pavel Dimitra, who, of course, as we know, passed away in the y locomotive plane crash. Um, and one other guy who could potentially be there... Um, is maybe a guy like Thomas Yurko. Great puck handling abilities, prospect of the Detroit Red Wings. He's one of their top prospects. If Slovakia is really thin as far as who they're going to bring in, they're definitely bringing in a lot of KHL players and 
European players. Maybe Thomas Yurko could play for them. And then also in goal, Mo there's no doubt about it that Yaroslav Halak is going to be the starter. He's really the only goaltender Slovakia has. Yaroslav Halak, whether he's the starter for the St. Louis Blues this year or the backup, he is definitely going to be the starter. One place he will definitely be the starter is Team Slovakia. They don't have any other goaltender significant enough to be starters. As far as where Slovakia is going to finish in the tournament, I don't think I think to, to me honestly considering what the other teams are going to have, I feel like they're going to set back a little bit. I think they will set back a little bit from 4 years ago. I don't think they're ready to win a medal just yet. Maybe in the coming years they will be, but for right now not not necessarily. But um, I think they will have a solid tournament, but not as good as a couple years ago. I don't see them winning a medal. Next, Team Russia. They're the big team. They're the big boys of this division. The home crowd, the host team. Most fans, obviously, are going to be there for Russia. They got new uniforms this year, and they're pretty darn nice uniforms. And for this team, year in and year out, we all know what they're about. Offense, pure offense, speed, stick handling, checking abilities, the whole package. The all, year in and year out, Team Russia is a, has always prevent, presented a system that has possessed the be, among the best offenses in the Olympics, if not the best offense, particularly in their days as the Soviet Union. Ever since the split of the Soviet Union, Team Russia has taken their mantle. Unfortunately, four years ago was a setback tournament for Team Russia. They did not win a medal four years ago, and it was a big disappointment. They've suffered a very disappointing 7-3 to three loss to the hands of Team Canada in Canada's home turf. Maybe now, if they do meet again, maybe Russia can return the favor on their home turf. But they are loaded with offense. They, they are loaded, loaded, loaded with offense. So they have no problem there. We know who their top six is going to be already. Alex Ovechkin is definitely going to be there. Evgeny Malkin is definitely going to be there. Pavel Datsuk is definitely going to be there. Alexander Semin is definitely going to be there. Ilya Kovalt and Ilya Kovalchuk is definitely going to be there. He, even though he's not in the National Hockey League anymore, for New Jersey Devil fans who enjoyed watching him, you'll at least get to see him for uh, for a few games this year in the Winter Olympics. Um, he may not, because, and it is because of wanting to play in the Olympics why he went back to Russia. So that's five members of their top six. Um, and, of course, I said Pavel Datsuk will be there too. So... That's a formidable top six right there, and even their bottom six. I bet we can bet that a guy like Artem Anisimov will probably be there um, as maybe their third line center. Don't maybe, you know, maybe a guy like Dinus Zubris could be there, but that may not be the case because they're also going to have some other star players from Russia coming coming out of the KHL that are going to play, particularly a guy like Evgeny Kuznetsov. He's definitely going to be a part of Team Russia um, if, of course, he manages to get, return in time. He is hurt, unfortunately, um, so he could miss the tournament potentially. So we'll see how that goes. Goes The weakness for Team Russia comes on defense. Defense is not very deep for Team Russia. They only have one um, strong offensive two-way defenseman on that team. And that is Slava Voinov of the Los Angeles Kings. He's really developing into a nice player, and he's going to be becoming a really good one, and he'll be a good defenseman for them. And in my opinion, he's probably the best defenseman they got. Other than that, they don't have a lot of good defensemen. Anton Volchenkov, he'll be there. He's probably their best shutdown defenseman. Sergei Gonchar will be there, even though he's 39 years of age. But, again, that's really it. They don't have too many defensemen to rely on. This is not a team that is very good defensively. They're among the worst defensive teams in the tournament. Um, and then you have their situation in goal. If 
it is pretty much believed that Sergei Bobrovsky is going to be the starter because of the type of season he had last year. He won the Vezina Trophy as a member of the Columbus Blue Jackets last year. Um, so he'll most definitely be there. Ilya Brzgalov, whether he signs with a team or not, he could put most likely be there. And maybe a guy like Evgeny Nabokov will be there. But overall, Sergei Bobrovsky is the most athletic goaltender they have right now. And he'll definitely play. Maybe a guy like Simeon Varlamov of the Colorado Avalanche will be there. But overall, offense they are is their best strength. And in goal, they're pretty solid too for once. Defense, however, is a big weakness for this team. And it is the defense that could set this team back. Overall, though, this is a year where Russia really needs to win the gold medal. They need to win it here and now in front of their fans. If they don't, they're going to have problems for years to come. Um, they're never going to be able to live it down. So this is the year they have to win gold or at least a medal. They need to win a medal this year, but gold is the most likely destination for them. I personally think they're probably going to win silver, but... We'll see what happens. I, For their sake, I do hope they win gold. And finally, last but not least, my homeboys, Team USA, the United States of America. Um, they also have new uniforms this year. Personally, I do not like the new uniforms for Team USA. I think that is a big distraction from their overall game plan. For Team USA, they've been known... For their group of small power forwards who work really hard and shoot really well. This is a hard-working, grinding type team. They are very strong in that category. Ryan Callahan, Dustin Brown, um, Zach Parise, you name it. They have a gr good group of hard-working power forwards that's really changing the style of this game. And, team and USA Hockey is really coming into its own. They are very strong on the wing. Patrick Kane is going to be there. Zach Parise is going to be there. Ryan Callahan is going to be there. Dustin Brown is going to be there. Bill Kessel is going to be there. Bobby Ryan is going to be there. That's pretty much a given. They're, the weakness for this team, unfortunately, is at center. They don't have a whole lot of depth at center. Ryan Kessler is most likely their top center if he stays healthy and has a comeback year. But outside of Ryan Kessler, they're not very deep at center. Paul Stastny is there. He had a setback year last year. He has to have a big year. David Backus, he's another one of those hardworking power forwards I mentioned. He has to have a big year. And Joel Pavelski, he has to have a big year. So, I mean, we could see a guy like Derek Stepan playing in, in the, for the team this year. They have a lot of options, Team USA. They're also really strong on defense. Ryan Suter is going to be back this year. Um, maybe a guy like Seth Jones could jump into the mix at some point. Who knows? Um, Kevin Shattenkirk's going to be there. Dustin Bufflin could probably be there. And, and the list goes on and on. Jack Johnson will definitely be there as well. So Team USA is set on, on their defense. And the real big question is in goal. They have a lot of options in goal. Jonathan Quick, to me, is probably going to be the starter. But they also have guys like Jimmy Howard, Ryan Miller, um, Jimmy Howard, Ryan Miller, uh, Craig Anderson, and Corey Schneider, who could all, will all battle for that third spot. To me, it's give, the given spots are for Jonathan Quick and probably... Jimmy Howard, I think those two are definite. The other guys, though, they're going to battle out for the third spot. Overall, do I see Team USA winning a medal? I do actually see them winning a medal. Where they are weak again is on center. They're set on the wing and on defense, and they have excellent depth in goal, particularly with Jonathan Quick. Um, their, center, their situation at center, though, could be what sets them back. Overall, though, I have a feeling that bronze is the most likely destination for Team USA this year. But this is another team that will battle to win gold. All right, guys, that'll do for Episode 40 of Hockey on the Spot. No video tomorrow. I'm going to be busy all day tomorrow, so enjoy your 9-11. God rest the souls of those who passed away in that tragedy. Next video will be on September the 12th, where we will talk about Group B. Until then, this has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Join me again on... Um, 
the 12th. Thank you and have a good day.